How's it going, guys? My name is Agrippa Maxinius here, and I'm a huge fan of organized crime. Wait, wait, wait. No, don't walk away yet. I'm not a fan of organized crime like I think they're good guys, but I'm a fan of the strategy around many organized crime syndicates, particularly the American Mafia. And today we're going to be taking a look at a game called The Commission 1920 that really takes us back to 1920 and to those Mafia times. Now, I think because the developers of the Commission 1920 value their lives, they have decided not to go with actual crime family names like the Gambinos, etc. Um, we're we're going to go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt on that. But what I really want to do with this video is give you guys an overview of what this game is about. So number one, first of all, you have to actually pick a family. Of course, how are you going to have a proper crime syndicate if you don't somehow kind of mesh with the family unit itself? So you want to go through like the different families here and see their strengths and weaknesses. So basically the Bojana family, they are of course a crime family, but they have very good connections with politicians in the area that we're working in, New Shore, which I must say looks very similar to the five boroughs of New York, uh, of New York City. Uh, that being said, you know, it could be based on something else, even Chicago, for instance. But these guys, of course, are good if you want to get in with the political elite. And we're going to get to that in this video so you guys can see that part of the game. The Kalesis just have a strong reputation, and they're the fastest growing family in the shore. They're pretty much like the Gambino family. They're not exactly the smartest or the toughest, but there is a lot of them, and they've been around for a very long time. Now, the Junio family, I have to say, I really adore these guys. And these guys really remind me of sort of the Sicilian faction of the American Mafia. Uh, and I'm talking about specifically Sicilians that came here from the old country and never actually really learned English uh, too much, uh, but still managed to ingratiate themselves in these crime syndicates. In fact, many of them would speak Italian to their dying day and very little English and still managed to run some massive families. These guys specialize in very low in rackets, so nothing like financial crimes or anything like that, just up close and personal stealing and mugging. The Donanos, they're an unassuming presence, and again, these guys, much like the Bojanas, do have a hand in the city political structure, but the Donanos are a bit of a mystery, so I think if you're kind of going for something mysterious, you might want to go for the Donanos. Of course, they are quite present in Rochester. This is going to be one of those boroughs that we're looking at. So you do get a bonus to the Donanos in the Rochester area. Now, the Rocca family. These guys go for high-risk rackets, and high-risk rackets are usually narcotics. Gambling is also a high-risk racket. Pretty much a racket that if you get sent to jail for this particular racket, loan sharking, there is a pretty high chance that other people in your organization are also going to get arrested, so you pose a problem. The good thing about the Rockas is they are without a doubt the most vicious family in the city, and if you want to go for a really aggressive playthrough, you want to go with the Rocca family. Now, since I am a big, big fan of the Juniors, that's who I'm going to take here. Let's jump right in. Of course, as you can see, there are a lot of different difficulty settings here, and we can go for hard. It, of course, gives you an idea of ex essentially what to expect, a moderate challenge. I think that's, that's acceptable. So here we go, guys. We are jumping in to the Commission 1920, and I want to get you familiar with what's going on here, specifically the family tree. When we're looking at a mafia family tree, there is a lot to look at here. A lot that's not here in a typical mafia family tree, but we can still uh, actually come out of this with a decent uh, hierarchy. So, for instance, the first thing we have is, of course, the Don of the family. Now, as he unlocks reputation, he's going to unlock some ability to increase the, the income from small-time crimes, but more importantly, he's going to get the ability to hire more subordinates. These two guys are couples, captains. And captains, well, essentially captains are sort of the second in command. The one thing that we don't have here that I'd like to see is a consigliere. So every mob boss does have a consigliere. Every mob boss usually also has an underboss. That, that, that's also not shown in this game. I'd like to see it. An underboss is a very important part of a mafia family. But that set aside, this is the 1920s. This is before RICO laws were introduced. So you could potentially actually see a boss without any underboss. The whole reason for the underboss being there is in case the boss gets arrested or killed, you've got a replacement pretty quickly. But what you do have are, of course, the captains. And in this case, they are related, which is 
pretty pretty uh, common in mafia families. That term family gets thrown around loosely, but there are definitely family relations in some of them. And the Juniors are basically my sons, Robert and Lester. Now, what you want to do, first of all, in the game is you want to select a neighborhood or more importantly, a borough to start in. So let's just take a look at West Cushman here. The description of West Cushman houses the city's blue collar workforce, taking over as the industrial center in the wake of Fordham's factory fire. The area is economically diverse, ranging from the affluent residential area of the factory workers to the downtrodden areas of the docks and the warehouses. And you really need to look at this and <clears throat> really try to consider Number one, what rackets, and rackets are illegal businesses, what rackets you want to really, you know, really major in, I guess, with major in, it's not university, but you know what I mean, uh, what rackets you want to take quite seriously. So for instance, if you want to go into narcotics, well, maybe a blue collar workforce would be quite good for narcotics. I mean, after all, you've got a tough day at the office, you get back home, maybe you just want to reach out for... I can't say the word because YouTube will demonetize me. Maybe for some H, you know, who knows? Um, you, you might have some pain in your leg. Doctor's not curing it very well. So again, a blue collar workforce would do very well there. Um, so would, of course, the numbers game. The numbers is essentially a community lottery of sorts uh, where you just have to give like, you know, a dollar, two dollars, something that everybody can afford. And you are, of course, enrolled in the lottery. Now, typically those proceeds go straight into the pockets of the mafia. If we take a look at Fordham, Fordham is once a booming industrial center, but never recovered from a factory fire that destroyed half of the borough. Those who stayed despite the rising crime have the thickest skin in the city. Resentment has grown as city officials label the borough a lost cause and stifle efforts to rebuild. This is actually very similar to New York City's The Bronx, about the 1970s, 1960s. I know we're looking at different time periods, but it essentially, you know, was... In just in great disrepair, um, buildings falling apart, etc. And the city didn't really want to do anything with it. Um, eventually they had to, but it's very similar how these are are, are kind of like the five boroughs. So, so this sits in uh, New Shore. It houses the financial and entertainment district and attracts tourists from across the globe. So see, if you want to go for more financial crimes, you're going to want to go to Dryer Square, just as an example. And this game is so much deeper than just the single borough because in the borough, we've got a ton of different neighborhoods, each with their own cultural significance, cultural significance each with their own workforce, etc. So it's just such a great addition. I think that's so fun. We've also got Rochester here. And account founded by the old money from the 1800s business magnate heirs and houses the upscale restaurants and cultural background of New Shore. So again, kind of an up, upper class area. And East Cushman is a little bit of everything, pretty much like your middle class dream. And I think this would have to be Queens. For sure, it would have to be Queens, New York, if it was anything. That being said, we are the Juniors. We've been around a long time, okay? We are from the old country, but we know how to deal with these rackets if need be. And I think we're going to go for the cheaper rackets. So we're going to send someone to West Cushman. Now, this is where we actually get to send one of our couples. In this case, I'm going to send Lester. But something interesting is beneath Lester here, we've got Alfred Giuliano and we've got Rocco Buccieri. And this comes to the final actual made men category of the Mafia. These guys are soldiers. They're not quite capos. They work for capos, but they're not associates either. So an associate would be a non-Italian that's working for the family, but can never actually become part of the family. These guys under Lester, Alfredo Giuliano and Rocco Buccieri, they might not be capos, but they're still made men. They're still invaluable to the cause. So we're going to go ahead and send Lester over here. He's going to be the capo regime to this area. And we are going to send our buddy Robert, well, my son Robert Jr., over here to Fordham. Now, once we get into these areas, we need to let one turn pass so that we can go ahead and start setting up assignments for our soldiers in Fordham. If we go over here to the rackets, excuse me, the territory, we can take a look and see exactly where our captains are. And you can see that there are other families playing and they've sent some of their captains over here as well. We've got the Bojanas and the Kalesis in Dryer Square. We've got the Donanos and the Rakas in East Cushman. Thankfully, it looks like they've left Fordham completely to us. Although in West Cushman, we're competing with three other families. That could turn into a war, it could turn into violent conflict, but for now we're really going to take a look at just the neighborhoods. Now I'd love to go through each and every one of these neighborhoods and talk about it, make videos on it, etc. Um, but that would take forever. We are of course fo focusing on the boroughs. If you guys do want a separate video on the neighborhoods, 
let me know. But just as an example, if we take a look here at Brooksfield, well, it's going to have its own description as well, just like the borough. So this is a spillover of workers commuting to West Cushman for work, and they've found a home here. With such low rent and security, it acts more as a place to sleep than a place to live. Now, there's going to be some clues over here as to what rackets are going to work the best. You absolutely want to look at this. It's medium income area, lower class. It doesn't really give us much information about rackets that would work here. However, when we go to Fishman Avenue, an otherwise inconsequential neighborhood, um, but also home of the railroad, we see that it favors smuggling, and it is a middle class area. So I want to go over here, and I want to start setting up some rackets. Now, to do that, of course, we are going to have to send one of our soldiers. So let's go ahead and send Alfredo Giuliano. Uh, let's see here. Is it Alfredo Giuliano? Yeah, let's do it. Um, I want to actually send him with some associates. So we've so the associates are beneath the actual um, soldier. But the associates work as soldiers for the soldier, if that makes sense. So if you go into an area and you've got five associates, the enemy's only got three associates, you stand a better, ch better chance of winning a fight in case it breaks out. So I'm going to send him with five associates. I think that's sufficient. It's going to take him, once again, one turn to get there. And for the purposes of this overview video, we're only going to be focusing on one of our capos and on one of our soldiers to really keep things simple. Now over here at Raggy Lane, we are going to send our second associate, Rocco Buccieri, and I'm going to send him with the rest of, excuse me, our second soldier, and I'm going to send him with the rest of the associates. So let's go ahead and go next. So as you can see here, now in Raggy Lane, we've got six, and that's represented by one capo, Rocco Buccieri, and his five soldiers. Now, unfortunately, the soldiers don't ever get names because, uh, excuse me, the associates don't ever get names because, uh, to be honest, they're just not that important. Um, now, you can have an associate become a soldier um, if, he, if he's, of course, full-blooded Italian and if he's done quite a lot for the family, then this can happen. And you can have that happen in this game. So you can hire more soldiers, uh, you can hire more capos, etc. All of this can be accomplished. But the most important thing to do right now is going to be the investments um, and I'm going to go ahead and select the investments. This is where you really make your money in this game. So we know for sure that they favor alcohol. We definitely want to go for something that's going to have uh, some drinking. The speakeasies are great. Of course, we're in the 1920s, so prohibition is in full swing. And that means that, uh, you know, speakeasies are pretty much the only place where you're going to be able to get an honest drink. Usually hidden away in some dark alley, but maybe a board in front of the door. But if you go in there, you're sure to get yourself a drink. Uh, the problem is, that's going to bring in heat. That's a problem. There's also a base maintenance cost of $600. So for instance, if we built this in a neighborhood that didn't favor alcohol and maybe an upper class neighborhood where they can pretty much get alcohol anyway, um, then we would have a very big problem. It's also very small. We might start losing money and ultimately we would have to sell the place. But there's another really great part of this speakeasy that you guys may be overlooking. And that is the weekly recruitment of eight soldiers or associates um, in this case, I'm going to keep referring to them as soldiers because when you really think about it, they are soldiers to our soldiers. Our soldiers are sort of like mini capos. They've got their own things going on. We are going to confirm that, but getting eight more helpers at the end of the day, guys that are willing to shed blood for our family, that's invaluable. Now, another way to get that, and in fact, we're going to purchase that right now, is the gambling den. The gambling den is the cheapest building to actually get uh, recruits. So as you can see, it does generate a little bit of heat, uh, but it brings in four recruits per week. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's pretty good. And there is a maintenance cost. And again, the only reason I'm building it here is because this area favors alcohol, so it'll do quite well. But don't ex don't expect um, to ever actually make much money with a gambling den. And of course, it would actually do better in a neighborhood that favors gambling, which yes, they absolutely exist. So when we look up here, guys, we've got the 5000 $500. That's how much money we've got to spend here. Let's see if our investments are going to net us a little bit of a profit. There we go. We're already at 7620 And again, may not sound like a lot, but this is in 1920 So 1000 is worth quite a lot. Now, don't just jump into your rackets thinking that you're just going to have a fun time selling whatever you want and the police aren't going to mess with you. This game is a simulation of a real crime family. Not only will the police mess with you, but your own family members can rat you out. I know it's terrible. And one suggestion I had for the creators here in the last game 
um, was to pretty much allow you to kill your own family members that are about to rat. I'm not sure if, that, if that's possible. We'll get into how to stop them from routing later. Uh, you can always threaten them, but that's not going to work necessarily. The interesting thing here, if we're looking at Ragulane, is that the heat is going up. And this is going to be something that's going to mess with you the entire game. Why is the heat going up? Well, because you've got some illegal businesses here. That's pretty much the definition of a racket. Um, is the, you know, you, you might appear like a legitimate business on the outside, but inside you're doing illegal stuff. So for, you know, just for argument's sake here, maybe this speakeasy is actually called, uh, you know, Bob's Butcher Shop, but deep inside people know what it actually is, and the police are getting wise to that too. They're slowly starting to notice that things are a bit suspicious here. A lot of trucks are leaving this area, and a lot of uh, very, very creepy looking guys with slick, black, slick back hair uh, and scars on their face uh, are walking around our area suddenly. Uh, pretty rowdy folks. So once this starts to go up, you need to make sure that it doesn't get to 80. Because at 80, at that point, the DA gets a search warrant and your mobster has a chance of being arrested. At that point, all the businesses are shut down. You've just lost a tremendous amount of money. Now this is important to keep in mind because if we go down here and this did not have this they didn't have this in the old game which I'm glad they added but I'm afraid people may use it too much and that is the auto suspense setting. So basically what you can do at any moment is you can shut down your rackets uh, in case that heat is going up too quickly. As you can see, it's jumped to 12. I could go ahead and actually just shut these down for a few days, and the heat will actually go down. Now, the benefit there is I get to keep my Ill 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 illicit businesses, but the negative aspect here is I'm not going to be making any money on them, and I'm going to be paying maintenance costs. So what this auto setting does is once it reaches 80, uh, it, they'll turn off all the rackets, but the rackets will only begin working again once the heat falls all the way back down to zero. And the reason you just can't necessarily do that is because if you've got something like narcotics or a casino, these are things that require huge maintenance costs. You're not going to wait for this to come back down to zero just to reopen it. Maybe you drop it back down to 40 or 50 and you take a chance. Go ahead, run it a few more days, etc. Of course, your play style is completely up to you, but I'm just giving you guys an example of how important it is to, um, you know, keep this this heat in mind and to play around with it a little bit. Don't just automatically click that auto button. I really think this should be done manually. Another thing you can do is let's let's suggest or, or let's assume that for whatever reason um, a bunch of other families come into this area. You start having a ton of conflicts with the Bojanas, the Kalesis, whatever, or you just have an area that doesn't make a lot of money, uh, the heat's too great, or simply a business that you've chosen isn't doing as well as you thought it would. Well, you can sell individual investments or you can sell all investments and just get out of that neighborhood. Remember, as long as you leave your capo and his soldiers here, then he's going to remain here. You'd have to actually have to move him to another neighborhood, but you can actually leave this neighborhood with your capo and leave a few soldiers behind in case you just want to hold on to a business or maybe just cause a little bit of trouble for your opponents. It's completely up to you, but it gives you an idea of how the actual um, heat works in the game. Now, when we go into the legal aspect of the game, this is where you can play around a little bit with the heat. We don't currently have anything here, but essentially you can hire attorneys, etc. to get your mobsters out of jail. And that also gets into the political aspect. Now, what do you think happens if you bribe the district attorney when one of your mafia guys is in jail? Well, there's a good chance that the district attorney is going to go ahead and release your family member, and your family member is not going to rat, not going to tell on other family members, and potentially shut down your whole organization. This is a huge danger anytime you're doing organized crime, so there's no exception in the Commission 1920. If you don't have the district attorney on your side, be very careful. If it gets, you know, way too late into the the actual uh, investigation, and the district attorney already has a case against your mobsters, well, first of all, I recommend you probably pray. But second of all, you can always go to the judge and bribe him. Of course, this all costs influence. And influence is something very different from the money you see up top. Unfortunately, in this game, money does not buy influence. Influence comes through a number of different ways, but one of those ways is actually having wars. So once you actually beat another family in a war, kill a few of your, their soldiers, you're going to get some influence. And the interesting thing is you can also get influence and intelligence on other 
families. So for instance, the Kalesis uh, or the Bojanas or the Donanos, if we get enough influence, we can actually attempt to kill one of their Kapos or even the Don himself. Now, this is just all the things you can do in this game, in this world of organized crime, but don't expect to be able to go after one of these guys right away. Uh, getting this unlocked and unlocking the political aspect of things is going to take you a little bit of time. It's going to take you a little bit of experience in the world of Freeport here. Now, those aren't the only options with the district attorney and the judge, and I want to show you some other ones. So the paper trail option allows us to gain intelligence on another family. If you're going to go after one of the enemy family members for a hit, try to set them up to sleep with the fishes, you're going to have to get some information on them. We've also got the discarded evidence, and this is not directly asking them to simply throw away the case, but it halves the sing chance of our capos or soldiers. Um, the same thing goes with the judge over here. We've got the Trump charge ability, which immediately issues an innocent verdict for the targeted legal case. This is extremely useful, of course. And one thing you're going to realize is that over the time the game goes on, these judges and these district attorneys and these police chiefs, they're going to change. Another fun thing is, yes, you can use the police chief to raid other families' businesses. So this is one way to get around the other family trying to avoid um, the heat aspect is no matter how low or how low the heat is, if you raid a neighborhood, which the other families can do to you too, the police will go there no matter what. So you can be doing something great. You can be doing really, really well, uh, keeping all of your bus businesses legitimate on the outside, and uh, they can still put you away if another family uses their influence to do that. So this is just a touch on the politics. Frankly, I think that this aspect of the game could be an entirely separate 25 minute video um but that's just me if we go over to the commission well this is the commission for those of you that aren't very familiar with what the commission is pretty much this is a way to uh, keep all of the crime families under a well a commission a group of gentlemen that agree to certain rules so essentially you know if the commission votes against a certain family that family can be targeted by all other families with no repercussion there's a number of different things that are going to affect your standing on the commission. One thing that really, really upsets them is when you attack others for no reason whatsoever. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do that. Believe me, it's probably one of the most important parts of this game is to actually attack other families in these neighborhoods. Um, but again, if you do that without provocation, if you're the first to, to you know, go to blows, then the commission could look poorly on you. Most important thing to the mission to, to the commission, though, is the dollars. The money. Are you making money? If you're making money, you're doing well, doing better than the other families. The commission's going to overlook a lot of things. So again, your goal here is to try and get as many rackets up in as many neighborhoods as possible. Valuable neighborhoods, of course, to yourself. And when opportunity strikes, so when, for instance, uh, an enemy family lands on one of your squares, don't be afraid to go to war with them. Now, the way we would actually do that in this game, I'm going to give you guys an example. We don't actually have a, um, an enemy in this area. But let's assume that we have my six here, and we've got a three over here from the Rocca families. Well, what we would do is we would go down here to the Rockas, and we would switch from peace to war. Um... And again, it doesn't let me do it because there are no Rockas here. <laughs> um, if the Rocka family were here, I could click that, switch to war, and the next turn, it would be a fight. Now, let me be very clear here. Just because you have more men than the Rockas doesn't mean you'll necessarily win. Um, a lot of factors come into play, but essentially, if you're the one coming to the neighborhood, let's say they have five, we have six, they might be able to defend it a lot easier. Uh, but if you're defending the neighborhood, you might not need as many guys. That being said, it often does come down to numbers, and these are not that battles that are usually decided in one turn. It usually takes a couple turns, so if you notice that your Mafia family member is losing a lot of his soldiers and losing the fight, your best bet might be just to get the hell out of the neighborhood. Go ahead, sell your rackets, come back later if you ch so choose to, but your best bet may just be to escape. Guys, I have only touched upon a tiny, tiny percentage of this remarkable and very, very in-depth Mafia simulator. I think there's so much here. Um, obviously, there are some issues that I have. I just think that graphics-wise, this could be so much better. We could get some animations of people getting shot, whatever. 
I know it's a lot to ask. That's really my only issue with the game. I think overall, uh, and this is in very, very early access, uh, this game has huge potential, especially if people really decide to play this with friends, share some stats with each other, see who can become the strongest Mafia Don. Uh, I think these things are very, very important to actually enjoying this. But let me be clear, this is a very, very nice sort of Crusader Kings 2-esque Mafia simulator. You get to have your own family members, your capos, your associates, your soldiers, and try and create the most vicious or maybe the most successful crime syndicate out there. Like I said before, um, these are not the only characters. We can unlock additional capos, the capos can ad unlock additional soldiers, and the soldiers can unlock additional associates. Something that I might have to put in another video, because like I said, we just can't explain everything in this video, but is the loyalty aspect here. And loyalty um, is very important. Obviously, if you have a, a family member that's not loyal, he could turn on you. He could even decide to go to the police and turn you in. Just imagine how awful that would be. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the Commission 1920. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. And also make sure to check out the Commission 1920 Steam page and uh, drop some opinions in the discussion boards. Really, that's the best place to go. Head to the discussion boards. Let them know what you'd like to change, what you'd like to see improved, etc. Uh, I'm sure this is a great time to do that. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.